Hey friend, Callan here from Something's Recording, and today I'm gonna show you four ways to control the gain inside of PreSona Studio One. Today we're gonna be looking at gain, and I'm gonna give you four different ways that you can control the gain inside of Studio One, and this is gonna give you some flexibility when you're setting your levels or doing your gain staging for your tracks inside of the DAW. But before we dive in here, if you're ready to go a little bit deeper into the mixing process, in its entirety and really start to hone your workflow as an audio engineer, then I have just the tool for you. It is my seven step mixing checklist and it's just a simple PDF that will walk you through the entire mixing process step by step to help you get professional and radio ready mixes without any more of the hassle and without any more of the guesswork. It is a completely free guide and you can download it below using the link in the video description. Now let's jump in here and look at setting gain inside of Studio One. So this is kind of a session I'm just prepping for mixing here. So a bunch of raw tracks and you can see I've already altered the gain a little bit on some of these tracks as I'm kind of going through and doing a little bit of a pseudo gain staging here. So I've got uh, the drum loop at the top of the track soloed and we're gonna use this as our example for uh, messing with gain. So let me play you the drum loop at least so you can hear what it sounds like uh, raw by itself. So just a simple drum loop we've got going on uh, and we're going to look at altering the gain on it in four different ways here. So way number one that you can alter or mess with the gain of a track is simply clip gain. And there's a couple different ways that you can actually access the clip gain on a track. If we come over to uh, the inspector tool here, you can see the clip gain right here down in your event effects. So if we click on any different track, it'll give us all of the event effects and it'll give us actually the fader here as well. So if I click on our drum loop here, if we come down in the corner, you can see it says gain. And as I move this here, you can see it changes the gain of our track here. So I'm gonna hit play and I'll mess with uh, our gain. You can hear how that works. So we can alter our clip gain that way. The other way is you can kind of do it freehand. Any track you click on, if you have an event selected, you'll have your fades on the end obviously, but in the middle there's this dot that allows you to change the clip gain. And it'll show you where you're setting the clip gain level and it'll also show you the difference you're making. So you can see I've pulled it down to negative 12 here and that's a six dB difference from where it was. I had it about uh, negative six. So we can alter the clip gain kind of freehand here, just dragging it up and down. So I'll show you how that sounds as we drag it down in, inside the track here. So being able to kind of drag it down freehand like that is very helpful if you're kind of just setting levels through your track, importing or importing pieces of a track, and as you're leveling through them, you're like, okay, I want to set this maybe a little bit higher, or there's a section you want to bump up a little bit in a mix and give it some more energy. It's nice to be able to just freehand it and drag it up inside a song till you hear it feels comfortable there for me. So that's our first way that we can alter gain inside of a track is just using the clip gain function. And again, you can get to that in the inspector window here, down in the bottom corner. And if you don't have this, sometimes when you open the inspector window, that's not there. So if it looks kind of like this, down where it says event effects, you can just drag up and you'll reveal all the stuff on the bottom there, all of our event effects. And then again, the other way is simply using our dot here in the middle and that'll allow us to alter the clip gain more freehand, a, a little bit more flexibility there. Now, the second way that you can alter gain, and this is kind of for newer versions of Studio One, so if you're still back in like Studio One 3 or 4, you might not have access to this yet, 
but if you're in five or the new version six, then you have what is called input controls. So if we open up the mixer view here and you come over to the little wrench tool, you can enable input controls. And then on each track up at the top, we will have input gain. So this is kind of like uh, mimicking what you have on an actual mixer desk, right? Where at the top of the channel before the fader, you have you know your mix control. So you have the input gain and then also gives you uh, phase for each channel, which is really, really nice. And this gives us another way to alter the gain of a track before it hits the fader. So I'll give you an example of this. I'll hit play and I'll move our gain knob here so we can alter the gain of this track on the input chain before it hits this fader here, so before we move it uh, with our volume knob. This way we can alter the gain of a track up at the top of the chain here. So if we find we're moving our fader maybe a little bit too low and we want more fidelity on our fader, we can bump some extra gain here or pull some extra gain off of it. That way we can pull the actual volume fader up in the track so we can be a little bit more precise with our movements on the fader. You can also double click and type in exact numbers, which is really, really nice. That's always a favorite uh, feature of mine whenever you're trying to change gain is being able to just double click and change the gain instead of having to try and freehand it sometimes. It's nice that you have options uh, to do both inside of Studio One. So we've done clip gain, we've done channel gain, which is just your input controls on each channel here. The next one we're gonna look at is just pulling in the mix tool. So this is kind of the old school way of doing it. If you didn't have uh, input channel controls, you could pull in just your mix tool. So this is more applicable to other DAWs. Most DAWs are gonna have clip gain, so you'll be able to alter the clip gain. Uh, not all of them are gonna have input controls like that, like we just explored, uh, but most of them will have some sort of tool that you can pull into a track and then alter the gain that way. So if we pull in the mix tool here, it's kind of mimicking what we ended up with further down the line in Studio One, which is our input controls that gives us our phase and gives us a gain knob at the top of each channel. The mix tool gives us a little bit more. We can swap left and right. We can uh, do mid-side transformations here. Uh, we can invert the left, the right. We can invert both. And we also have our big gain knob here. So if I hit play, I can alter the gain of this track again before it's hitting our fader here. That works pretty much the same way as our input controls. It's just nice to be able to pull it in sometimes. I use the mix tool a lot when I'm doing uh, revisions for a client. So if they ask, oh, can you bump up the bass guitar a little bit? Sometimes I pull in the mix tool just at the end of the chain and I'll bump the bass guitar up that way or I'll bump whatever track they asked up that way. Sometimes when I send the revision back, they're like, oh, that's a little bit too loud. Can you go back to where it was? So instead of me trying to remember you know, where the bass guitar was, I can come in pop the mix tool back to zero or nuke the mix tool all together and it'll be right back to where it was untouched. That's a nice function uh, that we have or a nice ability that we have with the mix tool. And again, you can double click and input the game that way. Nice to have the flexibility to be able to freehand it or just type in the amount of gain we wanna add to a track. So that's our third way. We've done clip gain, we've done input controls or channel gain, and then we've talked about using the mix tool or pulling in a gain plugin. The fourth and final way, which is kind of a nifty feature uh, that Studio One has added over the past couple versions is uh, the gain envelope or envelope features. And it's something you can actually bypass. So if you right click on a channel, it'll give you a lot of options here besides you know your, your normal copy and paste and crossfades and stuff. We can turn on our bend markers and transpose. We can also turn on our gain envelope. And the gain envelope kind of works uh, like automation, like we're automating the gain across the track. So it'll give us this line here in the middle and we could just do, you know, all together, we could bring up uh, the gain across the track. So if we click at the beginning and click at the end and then we pull up, we can pull up the gain all the way across the track there. We could highlight sections 
and pull them up all together, right? It gives us some flexibility here to bring up different sections of the gain and it actually pulls up our clip gain. So say there was just this section here and I wanted to kind of increase the gain as we come towards this fill. So I can create a dot at the beginning, a dot at the end, and then I can use this dot in the middle to slowly increase the gain as we roll through the fill and then we'll come back down at the end of that. So take a listen now to this passage. We could also go the opposite way, right? So say this fill here, we wanna emphasize it a little bit and we wanna roll into the fill. So maybe we pull it down by a couple dB and then on the back end here, we pull it up a couple dB. So now we'll come through and our fill will start low, slide up and it'll take us into the next part of the phase. This is a nice feature I use pretty much like I'm showing you here. So sometimes when there's a big snare roll in a song, I'll take that snare roll and use the gain envelope to pull it up a little bit. That way it rolls up and we get some emphasis taking us into the next section of a song. I'll use it like that for emphasis, kind of like automation, um, but I'll also use it if there's quieter parts of a song. So if I'm going through a vocal, and there's quieter phrases, I can throw the gain envelope on and just pull up certain words or certain parts of the vocal phrase if they tail off at the end and maybe we're missing that last word. I can pull in the gain envelope and the same way you're seeing here, I could just pull up that last part of the vocal phrase just like that. It's a nice way to kind of get creative with your gain. So in kind of instead of just using clip gain, right, where we just highlight a certain section and maybe we bump it up, you can actually automate it and create uh, your own envelope on certain phrases of a vocal, or if maybe if there's a snare hit or a bass note that you're missing on certain things, you can really get in and alter the envelope on certain notes or certain phrases of an instrument as it passes through in your mix. And the nice thing is, like I said, you can turn it on and turn it off, but you can also bypass it. So you can set all your gain envelope stuff, and then maybe if you're like, eh, I kinda wanna hear without it, instead of having to delete it, and then undo to try and get back to it. You can literally just bypass it, take a listen, and then unbypass it and listen again. That's the nice thing about gain envelopes there. They, they work really, really nicely on tracks and they give you a lot of flexibility to really get in on certain phrases or certain notes on instruments. So those are our four ways here. So four ways to automate or change the gain inside of Studio One. Number one is clip gain, and that's just dragging our actual clip on an actual track. Number two is channel controls, and that gives us gain at the top of a channel. Then we have our mix tool, pulling in an actual gain plugin to change the gain of an instrument. And the final way, the fourth and final way, was our envelope filters, giving us a lot of flexibility to really get in on specific parts of an instrument. I hope that was helpful for you. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you're ready to take your mixes to the next level and really start dialing in your workflow as an audio engineer, then I have just the tool for you and it is completely free. It is my seven step mixing checklist and you can download it below to start creating more professional mixes in less time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.